So I ran across this post on Instagram the other day, and I want to talk about it, because it awoke a strong opinion in me I didn't know I had. Hopefully we all recognize these are the bat signals in their different big screen appearances. And I'm going to go ahead and cover up the Mask of the Phantasm one, because I feel like it should be omitted from the following conversation. But looking at all of these together, the last 30 years of bat signals, I hate these three. These are the signals from the Dark Knight trilogy, Batman vs. Superman, and the Batman, and as you can see, they look like they're going for this sort of quasi-realism. What would it really look like if somebody were to flash the bat signal at the clouds? But it turns out this is a fake, patronizing, pseudoscientific answer because these three things wouldn't happen either. The bat signal is a ridiculous premise. This is pretty much as impractical as this. Now these two, which I think are Batman Forever and Batman and Robin respectively, They've got a nice design quality of interacting with the clouds while still being clear, campy bat signals. And personally, I will take that every time. These ones from the Adam West Batman and the 1989 Batman are a little too clean and crisp. They look as cartoony as the Mask of the Phantasm one does. But I think these two from the Schumacher era are a nice compromise. While these three border on unrecognizable, this one the most. And it's reflective of a very 21st century approach to designing things in these high genre movies. Where it's very important to convince the audience that what they're looking at is practical. Practical, grounded, realistic. When it's not, again, I'm pretty sure this isn't any more possible than this. And again, I'm not saying these are like objectively bad, but they come from a design school that I just don't ascribe to. It's it's a ridiculous concept, the bat signal, so lean into it. Give me these any day.